Well, hello, 1P, and welcome back. We're going to talk about equivalent ratios today, um, which is kind of equivalent fractions, which is kind of ratios. Uh, we'll get to a lot of little things that are kind of a lot of little things. Anyway, our goal today, I can recognize and write ratios that are equal in various forms. So, equivalent ratios. A ratio is in lowest terms if there is no whole number that will divide evenly out of all parts of the ratio. Two ratios are equivalent if they are the same when reduced to lowest terms. So now hopefully you can take a look at this thing and see that I've got the same shape here just divided into smaller pieces. And the part that I have in yellow should be the same on both of them. It looks the same. Um, if I pick one up and set it on top of the other one, it's the same size. Okay, so they're exactly the same. So let's take a look at what questions this is asking us. It says, what fraction of each diagram is yellow? Well, the first diagram, this is split into three parts and I've shaded one of those parts. So the fraction of that is one third. And this one, this is split into, well, I've got two by six. So it's split into 12 parts and I've shaded four of those parts. So four out of 12 parts are yellow. Now, if we reduce them to lowest terms, first of all, one third is already in lowest terms. Four twelfths, I have to figure out what goes into both four and 12. Um, and remember what I told you before, to figure out what goes into both of them, you could start writing out the factors. Uh, and if we start writing out the factors uh, of the big one until we find one that 4 goes into, we should be good. Um, however, 4 actually goes into 12 on its own. So since 4 goes into 12, we're going to divide both top and bottom by 4. Now you don't have to show this little thing, I'm just showing what what it is to get it into lowest terms. And when I put that in lowest term, 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. And so what we notice is that both are the same in lowest terms. Okay, that's a big thing to notice. Uh, example two, write the ratios of yellow to white for each of the above. Now, what's the difference between a fraction and a ratio? Well, a fraction compares a piece to the whole thing. So that's why the yellow piece was one and the, the denominator was three because it was three in total. Well, the ratios of yellow to white in the top one, uh, we have one yellow to two whites, okay? So that's the ratio, one yellow to two whites. Uh, and in the other one, we have four yellows, so four yellows to how many whites? Looks like eight, four to eight. Now you can write ratios um, as this, like this is a ratio, or you can write it in fraction form. This is also a ratio and it's sometimes easier to do math with if, if it's written kind of in fractional form. Uh, now it has asked us to reduce these to lowest terms. Well, one half is already in lowest terms or one to two is already in lowest terms. Uh, if I reduce this to lowest terms, I can divide both top and bottom by four again, which means this reduces to one to two. And you could have done that with this ratio too. If you saw four to eight, both of those divide by four so that you get one to two. Uh, and you see that this and this are exactly the same thing. It doesn't matter which one comes from. It doesn't matter, um, doesn't matter how many pieces I split that up to. If it's the same size, uh, the ratios are equivalent. So what is the difference between a fraction and a ratio? We've just sort of talked about that, but let's get it down in writing. A fraction compares one thing to the whole. So we compared yellow to the total number of squares. So I've got one yellow over a total of three squares, or four yellow over a total of 12 squares. And a ratio? 
a ratio compares two things to each other. So our class has, and we're going to make this a hypothetical class because there could be another class watching this later. Um, so if we have a class that say has uh, six boys and ten girls, what fraction is boys? Well, the total, the whole, which we need if we have fractions, the total is 16. So there's 16 altogether. So what fraction is boys? Six out of 16. And what fraction is girls? 10 out of 16. That's the fraction of girls. What is the ratio of boys to girls? Uh, the ratio of boys to girls will be 6 to 10 because it compares the boys to the girls. Um, or you could have written that 6 over 10. Those are both ways to write ratios. Or you could actually have written it 6 to 10 and actually use the words to to represent the ratio. So we've, that, what that means is that uh, the ratio of our class, we have 6 girls or 6 boys to 10 girls. And the other way around, what is the ratio of girls to boys? 10 to 6, or 10 to 6, or in words, 10 to 6. Okay. Now, none of these are in lowest terms, because if you take a look at this fraction, I can divide both top and bottom by 2, because they're both even. So when I divide top and bottom by 2, I get 3 eighths. So 3 eighths, and here I can divide top and bottom by 2, so I get 5 eighths. And notice that 3 eighths and 5 eighths still add up to a total of 8 eighths. And these can change too, I'm going to write it in different color. Both of these divide by 2, so this is 3 to 5 when I divide both of them by 2. So that means for 3 boys in the room, there are 5 girls. It's a pretty good ratio for the boys. Okay, there are three different ways to write a ratio. Each are illustrated in the next example. For each of the following ratios, determine an, that should say an, an equivalent ratio by either dividing or multiplying. So uh, here's what we're going to do here. And this is, I talked about these three different ways to write ratios in the last example. Now we're going to talk about equivalent ratios, and we're going to write them in the form that they're in. So we can do it by either multiplying or dividing. So 1 to 5, if I multiply both by 2, 1 to 5 is equivalent to 2 to 10. How did I get 2 to 10? I took 1 and I multiplied it by 2, and I took 5 and I multiplied it by the same thing, by 2. Now we didn't have to multiply by 2, we could have multiplied by anything else. We could have multiplied by, say, 10. If I multiply this by 10, I get 10. And if I multiply this by 10, I get 50. So 2 to 10, 10 to 50, those are both equivalent to 1 to 5. Now the next one, 120 to 60. Well, this one is awfully big numbers, so I'm going to actually divide instead of multiplying, although you can multiply, you multiply by 2 or by 10 or whatever you want, but I'm going to divide to make these smaller. I happen to know that 20 goes into both of these things. If I do 120 divided by 20, I get 6, and if I do 60 divided by 20, I get 3. So this is equivalent to 6 to 3. And you know what? I can put 3 into both of these things. So if I divide both of these things by 3, I get 2 to 1. Okay. So I did that by multiplying. And of course, since this is got the word 2 in the middle, I should have the word 2 in the middle for my two equivalent ratios. And then this one, 3 to 5, we can multiply the top, as long as we multiply the top and multiply the bottom by the same thing. So let's say I'm going to multiply top and bottom. 10 is the easiest one. I hope you can multiply by 10 in your head. So two more, or another equivalent ratio would be 30 to 50. 
or a lot of people can double things in their head really well. So another equivalent ratio, if I double the top and double the bottom, is 6 to 10. Ratios can have a multiplication or division relationship between them or within them, as illustrated in the following example. What are the two multiplication relationships in this? Okay, when I say within them or between them, it's actually easier to see if we write it in fractional form. 12 over 36 equals 24 over 72. Now here's the two relationships. The relationship inside the ratio itself is this one here. 12 times 3 gives me 36. And on the other ratio, 12, 24 times 3 gives me 72. Between the ratios, here, 12 times 2 gives me 24. And 36 times 2 gives me 72. So I'm going back and forth in between the ratios, and those have to be the multiplication relationship from one to the other has to be the same in order for them to be equal. And you can have it within the ratios itself or from one ratio to another, whichever one's easiest for you to see, because they'll both be true. So find the missing number. Let's have a look. Um, 5 over 30, and I always like to write it this way. I find it easier to see it this way. 15 over some blank here. Well, let's look for a multiplication relationship. Um, let's look over, let's look between the ratios to start with. Um, 5 times what gives me 15? Um, if you don't know, you can actually do 15 divided by 5 to get your answer, which means that you get 3. 5 times 3 is going to give me 15. So if I have 5 times 3 on the top, I have to do a times 3 on the bottom. And 30 times 3 is 90. Let's see if it works within the relationship as well. What do I have to multiply 5 by in order to get to 30? Well, that's going to be 6. And is 15 times 6 90? Let's have a look. 15 times 6 equals, yep, you betcha, it's 90. So 90 is the missing number. Here's another. Find the missing number. Okay, so we're going to find the missing number. And again, I like to go 7 over 12 equals P over 48. And this time, instead of having a question mark, I've replaced it with a letter. Doesn't mean it's any harder, it just means that now I've thrown in a little bit of algebra just by putting a letter as a placeholder instead of just leaving it blank. So again, we could go within the relationship. Uh, what do I have to multiply 7 by to get to 12? But that's not nice, so I'm going to ignore that one. I'm going to look for something nicer. 12 to get to 48. What do I have to multiply 12 by to get to 48? That answer is 4. So if I have to multiply that by 4, then I also have to multiply this by 4. And 7 times 4 is 28. Now here's the way I'm going to multiply, I'm going to write that down. I'm going to say P has to equal 7 times 4. And that is 28. Now sometimes a question becomes easier if you simplify a ratio first. This means find its lowest term value. Figure out what number can be divided out of each ratio to produce an equal ratio with smaller numbers. So this one we can reduce to lowest terms first because 6 goes both into 12 and into 30. 6 goes into 12 2 times and 6 goes into 30 five times. And so if we reduce to lowest terms, it might actually be easier to find the number. Now again, I'm going to write this as 2 over 5 equals 18 over p, just to make it a little bit easier to see relationships within and between. So we'll have a look. 2 times what gives me 5? Well, that's not very nice. It's, it's 2.5 is what it is, and you can find it by, to figure out what you have to multiply by, you reverse it and do division.
So you could do, well, 5 divided by 2 is 2.5, so I have to times by 2.5 to get there. And then I would have to multiply 18 by 2.5. Well, timesing 18 by 2.5 isn't as easy in my head as going across would be. And you should double check to see if there's anything easier. 2 times 9 gives me 18. So I need to do 5 times 9 to get the P there. And so I'm this is the way I'm going to write it down. I'm going to say P equals 5 times 9, which is 45. Okay, you earned $200 last week working 20 hours. How long will you have to work to earn $550? Now, I like to write some symbols down before I actually do the question um, and set up the ratio. So the two things that I have here, and you can highlight them too, I've got $200 and $200 in 20 hours. So the things I have are dollars and hours. And that's the way I'm going to write them. I'm going to write them as dollars over hours. So I know the one, it tells me I earn $200 in 20 hours. So I do 200 in 20. So $200 in 20 hours. Then it says, how long will you have to work to earn $550? Well, $550 is dollars. So when I'm setting up the equivalent ratio, I have to put the 550 on top, 550. And the bottom is where we don't know. We don't know what that is. I'm going to call it H for hours. Now let's take a look at our relationship here. Um, what do I have to do to 200 to get to 20? And then I'm going to have to do the same thing to 550 to get to H. So you want your arrow pointing f towards the missing value. And when it's pointing towards the missing value, you have to figure out, uh, and they both have to point the same direction, you have to figure out what the operation is to turn 200 into 20. Well, that is actually divide by 10. I have to divide 200 by 10 to get to 20. So over here, I have to divide 550 by 10 to get to H. So you can write that down. You can say, well, H is going to equal 550 divided by 10, which is 55. And since this is asked in words, I have to answer in words. So I would say, therefore, you work 55 hours to make $550. And that brings us to the end of this video on equivalent ratios.